Hello and welcome to today's video in which we're going to look at status triggered components or stuff versus edge triggered components stuff uh, program parts. <clears throat> yeah, therefore very quick, very quick, quick explanation on the setup we've got here there, right? You can see it there. Uh, there's a big red button. There's a small green button. If I press the small green button, it will reset. So all those values will go to zero. The big red button here, if I press it, right, if I press the big red button, right, you see it turns yellow. So it's not a big red button anymore. And you see the status triggered actually goes up very, very fast, right? This is how fast our program is. Every time you see it increasing by one, it doesn't update so fast. You can see every update, uh, but Every time the number is increased by one uh, means my program has been executed once. And you see the program that has been executed on top there. So this is what's happening, right? I press the button and you see in our add block, right? I have an add block and I add one to a variable that I call status trigger. This is the variable we are displaying here on our display, right? That's this one here. Uh, I add one to this number and push it into the same number. I'm, incre I'm, uh, I'm incrementing it. I'm increasing it, incrementing it, adding one on top of it. Right? Whenever this push button is pressed, the big red button here. As my program is executed approximately 1,000 times per second, you see this number increases very, very, very fast. This is called status trigger. If this function is executed 1,000 times per second, meaning we are going to increase the number by 1000 per second because every time it's doing that every time it's there in the program it's adding one right that's what it does that's what push button it's a normally open contact whenever this is closed whenever the push button is active we're adding one to the value so it will be very hard for me here to actually increase this by just one if i want to increase this by one it means i can only have this active for one execution of my program meaning for approximately one millisecond. That's going to be difficult. There's a lot of stuff that is status triggered. If you press the thing, it's happening as long as you press it. If you release the thing, it's not happening anymore. That's why we have it. Uh, don't really have an example right now, but imagine or look at your keyboard. Your keyboard is, um, uh, if you play a game or so, or if you do anything, actually, if you hold down a button, it's actually pressing that button all the time, right? Your character or whatever you have is reacting to exactly this button press and it's going on and on and on and on unless uh, until you release the button. That is status triggered, right? That is status triggered. That's our first thing here, right? Let me press the small green button. Boop. <laughs> That's status triggered. Then we have edge triggered and we have two different types of edge triggered. You see the big red button. I only want to evaluate how many times has it been pressed. Therefore, I go to my second program part here. So this is my second program part. It's a positive edge detection. You see this P trick. That's the main difference that we have here. It's a P trick. The rest of the program looks the same. We have the push button here in the beginning and we have this add block actually adding up on the edge triggered so in another variable here on a, on a but it's also an integer value actually long integer but doesn't matter <clears throat> so i press the big red button and you see this block does not turn green like the one on top the status triggered one it turns green and it's doing that over and over and over and over again you see the number increases for the positive edge triggered so this number here this number there right on this line this number does not increase. Uh, it increases, how many times does it exactly increase? One time, whenever I press the button. So only when I press the button, it's increasing by one, right? Only in that moment when I press the button after that, it's not. And this is what an edge trigger does. It transforms a signal that we have there in the beginning, the push button. It transforms this push button and only sends out a pulse exactly one time. So it's making from a long, 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 long signal, it's just creating one pulse, right? So one cycle thingy. That's what the trigger here does. We can't see it turning green because this is only like one millisecond. Maybe sometimes we would be lucky because the program updates in a specific or in a random, not random, but depending on how fast the PC is and so on. Um, sometimes we could maybe see it turning green, but probably can't do it. The chance is very, 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 very low. <clears throat> 
I press the button and the P trigger, that's a positive edge detection, transforms the clock, the so-called CLK that's coming in, signal coming in, into a Q output that is only there one time whenever we see a rising edge, a signal change from zero to high, right? Only when we have this signal change. For this, all programs somehow need um, an edge detection mechanism. Most programs use some type of variable as well. How does this internally work? How can we know, hey, we were at zero and now we are at one? That's exactly how. If we've been at zero and now we are at one, this is how we can detect, hey, here in the middle, there was the edge, right? It was zero, now it's one. For this, we need some type of memory, right? This one here, down here, actually remembers the status from the last time and puts it against the status that we have now, right? If those two are different, if it was zero and it's now one, we have a rising edge, it's going up. If it was one and is zero now, make a guess, we have a falling edge. And exactly that's what I have here in my next network. Here we have an, a so-called end trick, right? A negative trigger. If we've been at one, if we had a high signal and now we have a low signal, it pushes out the one. Again, I can press the button here. You won't really see it. We can count the negative edges. You see, when I press the button, we will increase the positive edges by one, but the negative, of course, not. The negative only when we have the signal change from one to zero in the moment I release, right? That's how this works. Positive versus negative edge. When you're working with those, doesn't matter for the programming language um, uh, and programming tool, make sure that when you copy and paste or when you make new edges, that this variable down here, because it is the memory here, this, this stuff from the last cycle, it needs this memory. Every operation from those um, edge trigger components, right? The pro little programs in there. They need this evaluation from the last time. They need the value. So if you copy and paste a lot, uh, make sure that this variable is always different. You, Whenever you use a new edge detection, use a new variable. So let me check that out. That's just my reset circuit down there. You don't need to see that. I will show it. But I, you don't need to let me make myself a little bit smaller. I'll go to the side. Is it? Now I'm, now I'm here. <clears throat> you see, for every edge here, for this one here and this one, I use different variables. This one is called push button from last cycle like because it's this one, just one cycle delay, delayed. Positive edge and this one is called negative edge and edge. So it's two different things. Right? It needs this. Good. So much for the explanation on that. Oh, just if you're curious, I just also have, this is my reset. Whenever I press the green, small green button, I'm just pushing. It's also status triggered. Um, I'm pushing a zero into those values. That's it, into those variables. Good. So, so much for um, edge detections, right? Edge detection versus status detection. I hope this is a little bit helpful to you because a lot of people have many issues with this, but it's not difficult in the end. So. If this was any helpful or if you have any questions, just leave a comment down below. Um, I thank you for watching. If you want to stay up, for, uh, stay tuned for more contents like this and more detailed programming, um, do not forget to like the video and do not forget to subscribe to my channel. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.